At the beginning of December 2019, the idea of a system similar to the Super License system was floated around by Jean Todd and the FIA for use in the Junior Formula categories. This was proposed in order to stop drivers from getting into series like Formula 2 without first having shown some success in their careers beforehand. The discussion was started in response to a loophole in the rules that allowed drivers who have accrued enough penalty points over the course of a season for a disqualification to continue racing that same weekend. But is another system stopping drivers from climbing up the ladder even necessary, and would it even be feasible? Let's discuss. So first of all, I wanted to point out that there are already rules in place to stop drivers from moving to more powerful machinery without sufficient experience. For example, a driver needs at least an international Grade A license for Formula 2, or a Grade B license to race in Formula 3. Obtaining these licenses requires a few conditions to be met before they are given out. Let's use the International Grade A license as our example. First, a driver must already have an International Grade B license, as the hierarchy would suggest. Next, the driver must have taken part in at least six rounds of a Grade C championship at some point in their careers, which could be from something like a Regional F3 championship. After that, the driver needs to be at least 17 years of age by the application's deadline. And finally, we reach the rule that a lot of people aren't aware of. Section 4.3.4 states that in order to be eligible for a Grade A license, a driver needs to have accumulated at least 14 points at the time of the application's submission. Much like the approval for a super license, these 14 points must be acquired in the preceding three years of the application. So there is already a requirement for points in order to get a license to race in Formula 2, but there are some ways around it. First of all, a driver needs to have participated in at least 80% of two full championships as stated in the super license table. However, any driver that has completed two full seasons of a Grade B Championship or an FIA Regional F3 Championship will be given five points towards a Grade A license application, regardless of how well they performed. Not only that, a driver's ASN, the organisation that oversees the application in that driver's country, can award a driver up to an additional five points if they believe the driver has shown the appropriate skills and experience. So now, rather than 14 points, a driver could theoretically only need to acquire four points in able to get a license. And finally, they must pass a question session conducted by their ASN regarding the most important points of the International Sporting Code. So as you can see, in order to get that license in the first place, a driver does need to jump through some hoops. But with ways of gaining the system through additional points, and the typical FIA favouritism towards their own series like Regional F3, it does dampen the difficulty somewhat. Say we ignore these restrictions and work on a new system, but still using points as our metric. Again, I'll use Formula 2 as our example. Let's start by setting a baseline of 20 points, half of the 40 points needed for Formula 1. Of the 14 drivers who participated full-time in Formula 2 this year, only half of them would have qualified to race in 2019, with one of those only just scraping through on 20 points. That means there are 7 drivers who would not qualify. If we included the non-full-time drivers, it doesn't look too much better either, as only an additional 4 drivers would be eligible, while a further 9 wouldn't. So as you can see, if we were to use the current point system as a basis for our feeder series system, you'd be hard pressed to actually get a full grid. Now, admittedly, 20 points is quite the high barrier, but if you halve the points requirement down to 10, then the number of eligible drivers only increases from 11 to 16, with three of those on 10 points exactly. Again, we don't have a full grid of 20 cars under this method, and even if the requirement was set to 4 points, the minimum required as per the regulations, there would still be drivers who didn't qualify. But you need to keep in mind that the requirements for getting a license can change every year, even multiple times a year, so at some point all of those on the grid that don't meet those requirements in our scenario would have at some point been approved. But since the process is so convoluted, it makes it hard for diehard motorsport fans, let alone a casual fan, to understand what on earth is going on. So at the end of the day, would an additional system even be necessary? I don't think so. Ultimately, what this idea floated by Jean Todt does is add another layer of bureaucracy to an already complicated and expensive sport without really fixing anything in the process. Here's my solution. Once a driver achieves a ban at 12 penalty points, whether that be through causing an avoidable collision on track or speeding in the pit lane five minutes into practice, the driver should be immediately sent off. No ifs, no buts, gone for the rest of the weekend. If it's for a minor infraction and it's still before the first race, then they might be able to argue themselves back on the grid that way, but for all intents and purposes, a driver is on the bench for the rest of the round. Another solution I saw on Reddit by user BTCC1721 is to have the penalty points keep accumulating after the first ban, rather than resetting at 12 points, with the eventual prospect of a driver receiving a 12-month racing ban after 25 points. 
Either way, both ideas tackle the problem head on rather than looking to apply another system on top of an already complicated procedure. We've seen drivers have poor results in one category, but then shine when they move up the ladder. Why penalize that potential just because one or two drivers over the course of a series entire history are making a mockery of the sport? You have to turn the and those are my thoughts on the proposal. Do you agree or disagree? Do you have any ideas or methods that might work better than what I've suggested? Discuss it in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, then let me know and subscribe for more videos like this. Or if you like what I do, you can support me on Patreon. My name's Jacob, and as always, until next time, goodbye.